And good morning. Welcome to Today at the Race is here at Laurel Park, presented by Fidelity First. I'm Stan Salter, Keith Fustel. The sun is out. Yeah, right. Sunday fun day is mm -hmm. here. And I tell you one guy who's loving all the extra racing this holiday week, yeah. and that's Fergal Lynch, a four-bagger on yeah. Thursday. Fergal Lynch with another four wins yesterday. Our leading rider, Jevion Toledo, also with a three-win Saturday here mm -hmm. at Laurel Park. So uh, the top riders, uh, Fergal Lynch, Jevion mm -hmm. Toledo, having a big weekend. Yeah, they're establishing themselves, moving away from the pack a little bit, but uh, Lynch just absolutely red hot, you know, just increasing that bankroll. If, if you need a loan, maybe you can lend out a couple <laughs> bucks. We make some extra bets today. Or, or maybe Fearful, the, we might, we might, you know, you might be our new ATM. Or maybe the agent, Scotty <laughs> Silver. <he laughs> or <is> Scotty, right. <laughs> Trevor, Trevor McCarthy, who's always doing well around here yeah. as well. So those are uh, the hot riders in town this weekend. Nice nine race program for you today. Some changes uh, with the turf courses today. We'll have all mm -hmm. those changes for you. And uh, if you don't get them from us, make sure you double check on Equibase. We'll be on the bowl game and the Fort Marcy turf courses uh, today. So we'll make sure we give you all those changes as we go throughout the show. Let's tell you everything we have going on here today. It's fantasy football pick seven out here on Sunday. We debuted this last Sunday. I think it's going to be huge. Keith, there's $2,500 in the pool. It's a fantasy football pick seven contest. It's like a pick seven horse bet, right? Uh -huh. uh, you pick your quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, and a defense. You get a free entry voucher with every purchase of a racing program or racing form. So make sure you get that mm -hmm. and then go up to the second floor clubhouse, that new sports bar up there, and that's where you enter the fantasy football pick seven contest. There's $2,500 in the pool. Last Sunday, it paid four out of seven for a little over eight hundred and thirty dollars no doubt no doubt it's it, it's a good it's a good bet everybody's got a live shot you know the seven guys that they have in each category it, it's tough to decipher so uh three four of seven three of seven four of seven gets it done i'd love to see if anybody hits seven of seven that, that would be incredible but uh yeah I, I i like the bet it's a fun bet it's cheap you know just get yourself a program or a racing form they're going to give you a voucher you go up there they'll have somebody there helping you out if you need some help on that self-service terminal to make the wager. And we have the, uh, so you'll be in, you have to get in before the one o'clock mm -hmm. games, and then you can watch all the NFL games today up there on the second floor at that new sports bar. Yeah, we have the Sunday NFL ticket up there, every game, every Sunday, uh, the sports bar up there on the second floor of the clubhouse, an awesome area to hang out, watch football, mm -hmm. watch the races, get some drinks, get some food. Uh, there's the new sports bar right there. It's uh, newly redone, it's beautiful, it's huge up there, mm -hmm. every uh, the game, every race uh, you can imagine yeah. up there at the new bar. I love it. Lots of action. Action galore. This is what it's like. You know, we've we kind of brought Vegas right here to you pretty much. You've got everything that you need on a Saturday, on a Sunday. We got college football games are showing. So everything is right there. Make some new friends. You know, that's the cool thing about racing. Meet, meet some new friends. Discuss some handicapping angles, whether it's uh, football, horses, you name it. So uh, really a good job they've done up there on the second floor. And, and they had a, a naming contest for the sports bar. We haven't officially named it yet. Maybe we just go with the sports bar and we recapture the magic we had back in the sports palace from the 80s when yeah. that joint was packed every Sunday watching yeah, all the games. Absolutely. So, all right, so the sports bar, new sports bar up there on the second floor of the clubhouse. Also, we have the premier parlay on Sundays. Uh, correctly pick a three-team NFL parlay and double your premier player points at no risk of losing any points. So make sure you get in before the 1 o'clock games. It's for the 1 o'clock and the 4 o'clock games. Uh, pick three mm -hmm. NFL games. Any tips today for football, Keith? I think the Ravens should go ahead and get the job over done Cincinnati, today. right? They, they, they should. So uh, 
you know, I usually hate them against the Bengals. Uh, I like them today. So all this football action and horse racing here today. We have a nice carryover in the late pick five. You might get hungry, and we have you covered there as well. Sunday brunch every Sunday out here at Laurel Park. Chef Damon up there whipping up a good thing. You can get Sunday brunch at Tips or Tycoon. Some good specials mm -hmm. at Tycoons and Tips as well today. The grilled ribeye steak and eggs for $13 looks pretty good. Mm. Uh, but they have uh, uh, the Sunday brunch up there in that garden terrace. $22 for adults, 11 for kids. Um, uh, under 12, under 6, they eat free. So unlimited bl Bloody Marys and mimosas for the adults are an additional 12 bucks. Good, Good deal stuff. for Sunday brunch. Yep. All right, let's get right to it here. Uh, nine race program today. Also, don't forget, we got the carryover today in the late pick five. Hopefully you, mm -hmm. you make a nice score mm -hmm. in that and then you mm -hmm. come out here to Mon tomorrow, special Monday card of live racing. You can parlay it uh, tomorrow um, uh, due to our weather cancellation last Sunday with that crazy wind. We'll make right. up those races mm -hmm. on Monday's card. Some nice races tomorrow. Uh, we have that carryover in the late pick five uh, today. It's a tough sequence. And yes. Maybe, maybe and, it carries yeah. over tomorrow mm -hmm. and we'll get some drama and, uh, and have a nice late pick five carryover tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Maybe, Never, maybe we hit it today. I'd, I'd like to hit it today. That'd be great. Carry us into the Monday and then survive the week and bring it back and probably blow it next week. That's what this game's about. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the carryovers today. No carryover in the rolling super high five, but uh, the rainbow pick six, that'll start race four today mm -hmm. on our nine race program. We have five races on the turf. Rainbow pick six, a little over $800 in that carryover. And then the big carryover today comes in race five, that late pick five with an industry low 12% takeout, a little shy of 3,700 there for the late pick five starting in race five today. Uh, both of the pick fives here at Laurel Park, your best bet. Both of them have an industry low 12% takeout. Mm -hmm. There's a carryover potential in the late pick five. The early pick five is a mandatory payout. Sometimes you yeah. can take the whole pull down with a four out of five or three out of five payout. Some nice big prices in the early pick five uh, yesterday. So let's take a look at the weather. The sun is out for the, the most we've seen all, all weekend. Yeah. It's a beautiful Sunday here. Sunny, breezy, main track fast, turf is firm. As we said, we're going to get to you on the changes on the turf course. Uh, we're going to use the bowl game in the Fort Marcy this afternoon. But a really, really nice day on tap at Laurel Park. We're fast and firm. First race post time, 1230, clear, sunny in the 50s today. A beautiful day for fall horse racing mm -hmm. here in Maryland. Let's get right to it. Race one kicks off the early pick five. Both Keith and I are going to take a stab at yeah. it here today. This is a maiden claiming 40,000 for two-year-olds mm -hmm. going a flat mile. We're on the bowl game turf course going 17 feet with the rail at 17 feet on the bowl game here in race one. Mm -hmm. uh, the rolling super high five, no carryover, but keep your eye on that throughout the day. You can catch a nice carry over in that rolling super high five has a low 15 percent takeout for the super high five let's take a look here race mm -hmm. one kicks off that early pick five let's show keith fustel's early pick five ticket here and see it see how see how we look yeah it's a tough little sequence uh, you know i'm hoping we get a free square in the second race with kieran's horse on, on, on the jam job the first race really really tough i, I could go deeper uh, I may have to grab a couple buddies of mine and, and add a couple horses. We're going to go five by one. We're going to single ten hut the four horse in race two by three by four and by two. Gonna, the, the fifth race is another. It's a, it's a shorter field. Can you really throw it all in on whether you're not? I, I don't know. I've got to go one more horse in there. I'm going to use uh, Yomar Torre as a seven pound bug rider on the four horse. My awesome alley as well. Sixty dollar ticket. Tough little sequence. If ten hut gets beat. This thing is going to pay astronomical. Absolutely. He'll be the heavy favorite for, li mm -hmm. re for reliable connections. Yeah. When Kieran McGee does that, he has a pretty good number, and you yeah. get the lead and rider, Javion Toledo. So let's take a look here at my early pick five starting in race one. I'll go four deep here in the opener using the 1 6, 11, 12, going four deep again there in race two. I'll, um, I'll key on the two in race three. One of my best bets okay. of the day, Silver Romeo from the Hugh McMahon Barnes. Been running good consistently here mm -hmm. at Laurel Park. It's a little bit of a class relief today. Maybe. I'll have to get your opinion on that, Keith. Mm -hmm. But we do get Fergal Lynch, the yeah. red hot rider, on the two Silver Romeo there in race three. And then I'll go four deep there in the fourth race, going just two deep there in race five. Let's take a look here. Race one kicks off that early uh, pick five. And I'm going to go with a 10 to 
Number one, first time starter on top from the Alex White Barn. Number six, Lamborn mm -hmm. by English Channel, who uh, is a, a turf, a, a distance mm -hmm. turf specialist. That's yes. the kind of horse he was. That's the kind of offspring he throws. The dam, Ain't She Awesome by Awesome again. Uh, she ran only one time. She was second as the heavy four to five favored in a maiden special weight up there at Woodbine going seven furlongs on the dirt. Got a 62 buyer. Uh -huh. uh, this uh, this two-year-old Colt is a half to uh, Abriana, who made uh, over 100,000, had a couple wins on the synthetic. There's mm -hmm. no no turf pedigree there in the offspring uh, of this dam, but I like the breeding. We know Alex White can get a turf horse ready yeah. going long, and she gets the lead and rider Jevion Toledo to take the call here yeah. on this debut runner at 10 to 1. I'll take a shot here on the six Lamborn. Yeah, horse I would like to throw in into my early pick five if I could, if I can grab a couple extra bucks. Yeah, she has one with a firster, certainly bred to handle the distance. Foles 0 for 7 on the grass, but have run in the mid 80s. So they're there. They've run comparable enough numbers, and, and, and certainly you're only going to have to run maybe a lower 50, I would think, buyer figure to get this race done so uh, a horse to keep an eye on attracting heavy on Toledo right could, yep. could could be a key there so so watch any kind of action on the six Lamborn I'm kind of all over the place trying for a long shot go to the outside towards the outside with the 10 seven knots for trainer Simon Purdy hasn't run a lot of horses here over the last few years but uh, by Sydney's candy out of a Malibu uh, mare Malibu Moon Mare, uh, that mare was half to a graded stakes winner, some graded stakes winners on the turf. The blinkers go on, a little stretch out, comes out of that really tough Irish work fry race. Uh, Sydney's Candy, the sire, like to use that speed on the lead. Uh, maybe Taylor Holt with a ride like Bay Bridge yesterday. Yeah. You see the debut, seven wide, mild late move. Maybe we can change tactics and set a little bit more forward with the blinkers or take a shot at a price. All right, so both Keith and I taking a, a shot yeah. with a 10 to one price here in the opener now with the scratch of Barcraft here mm -hmm. in race one. A couple in, uh, important horses draw in yes. off the AE. The 11, a true gentleman with Fergal Lynch aboard for Ferris Allen, mm -hmm. seven and two morning line, and also the 12, Baron uh, draws in at nine to two with Kevin Gomez aboard for Gary Capuano. And we've got the 13 as well. And yeah, the, yeah, so yeah exactly. Royal Hussar is also in, yes. It, it, exactly, so mm -hmm. uh, so three horses draw in off the AE here in race one. Let's talk Let's talk about the 11. We both like the yeah. 11. Uh, Fergal Lynch, the red hot rider. Uh, Lynch was aboard last time. This horse, the beaten favorite at the maiden 25 level, was in front turn mm -hmm. for home and just uh, got a little tired, only beating a half length there, finished third. That was going a mile and a 16th. Now we're cutting back to a mile. Mm -hmm. That may, might make all the difference. It certainly was towards the outside, was had to use, you know, a horse to get position early. Held on quite well though, you know, only losing by a half a length. The step back up the four, from 25 to 4, this isn't really a step up when you really look at the rest of the field. Yeah, it's a major factor, obviously. Everything with Fergal, Fergal Lynch is live. And Barron, a real good close the yeah. last eighth of a mile. Uh, you see that angle. That's Gary's angle, second time out. Uh, this horse moves forward again a little bit. Caught outside, a little less distance. Is he going to be able to get the right setup to get up in time? All right, Marathon Farms, yep. uh, Maryland homebred there. Uh, the 12 Baron, I like that run. Mm -hmm. I'll throw the one in there as one. Papa Pablo, Alex Centron should get a nice ground saving trip here yeah. for trainer Niall Seville. Uh, they added uh, Lasix last time, and this horse improved. Good second, just yeah. beating a half length up there at the Meadowlands on a good turf course. He'll yeah. get a firm turf course today. Hooked a pretty good uh, field in, in August at Laurel. Added the Lasix last time, a little drop and a stretch out at the Meadowlands. A bruisey star, the winner, was a dropper coming from Maiden Special Weight, I think, to Delaware. Trevor McCarthy gave a real good ride on that horse to get up that night. I happened to watch that race. Smash and dash, I'm going to use into the mix, too, for one of our leading trainers here, Mary Epler by Hart. Spun out of a Saddler's Wells mare. Nice turf breeding. top and bottom. Unraced mare, but two, two winning turf sibs. Uh, one rounding and one spreading that ran lower 80. So this horse definitely want to keep an eye out. She strikes at a pretty good rate with maiden claiming first time starter. And she surely does as a Mary, Ep Mary Epler first time starter tomorrow. I like out of that mare okay. Snunner. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's, uh, uh -huh. So that's uh, tomorrow, Monday racing here at Laurel Park. All right, so the early pick five with that mandatory payout starts in race one. Mm -hmm. Let's turn the page. The early pick four starts here in race two. We're on the main track going six furlongs, claiming 5,000, never won two lifetime for three-year-olds and upward. Kieran McGee with the heavy favorite here. This horse is supposed to win for fun. 10 hut, seven to five morning line. Jevy on Toledo aboard. Uh, no good first off the claim against 16, two life. Mm -hmm. Now we're taking a huge drop to the nickel, two life. Life. Toledo uh, gets aboard. This horse is supposed to get the money here. It's just against a better field last time. Was trying, was caught in between horses early, kind of hustled along, hustled along, didn't really seem to get comfortable around the turn. Picked it up a little bit late. Drops now. Uh, Kieran, the last six months, six for 10. 
in a 50% class drop. This is that 16 down to five, yeah. six for 10 over the last six months. And I think over the last two years, he's still like 40, 45, 46%. So uh, all or nothing, I, I would think, for 10 Hut and heavy on Toledo. One, he's, it's yeah. why he's one of the leading trainers around here. This is how, this oh, is their no MLs, yeah, this is how they win races. Um, yeah, and you keep your owners in the game, too. You, you, yep. you got to keep them moving. They win pl plenty of races on, on the step up as well, mm -hmm. and then they, they get the job done with this angle also. I'll throw yep. the five. Mac North uh, finally broke the maiden last out, uh, dropping from maiden special weight company down to maiden 10 um, for trainer Hugh McMahon. Trevor McCarthy was aboard there. McCarthy stays aboard now. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, this horse is well spotted off that maiden win against maiden 10. This is yep. the race that the, this is where you're supposed to go after that race, so um, I, I like him off that maiden win last out with McCarthy. Yeah, the horse showed a little bit of talent, you know, early as his three-year-old career, and then just kind of steadily declined. But you're right, making the right move. Obviously, the horse hasn't panned out the way, but uh, well spotted here off of that win. Inner Fire, who ran third uh, in that race last time behind Mac North, came back to win the nightcap yesterday. Slew's Love, I'm going to give a little shot to against the bias last time out on November the 5th, was down inside, tried the whole way. Uh, I think this horse will be able to ease off the inside early with some speed to the inside and to the outside. Won't be caught down on that rail. Uh, uh, Fergal Lynch gets aboard the three drive at night for the first time for trainer Damon DeLodovico, and I think it's pretty simple with this horse. If they can get the horse to the outside, yeah. he's a factor. He, just, yep. he hates being down mm -hmm. on the inside. That's what happened to him last time yep. as the beaten favorite breaking from the one hole. No doubt. So, all right. So, well, we both like the same four horses there in the second race. That race kicks off the early pick four. Race three, we get back out to the turf course and some, some changes here on the turf course. Mm -hmm. Race three will be run on the Fort Marcy turf course with the rail at 87 feet. This is a starter allowance optional claiming 25000 one of my best bets here, and I'm keying on this horse in the early pick five, the yeah. two, Silver Romeo, Fergal Lynch gets aboard, poor trainer Hugh McMahon. The last race was a never win three for claiming 35,000. Um, this may be a lateral move here to the starter 25. Here's the race two back, though, against Allowance Company, October 14th here at Laurel Park, mm -hmm. and uh, Silver Romeo actually gets in front here, uh, like the, the, the gray horse, gets in front, and uh, just uh, they come passing him. Daniel Ledoux, a sharp winner. Swell Elegant, who finished second, would come back to win. I like Swell Elegant in, uh, later today or okay. tomorrow. The races are all yeah. running together. <laughs> uh, but uh, Fergal Lynch gets a board here should get a ground saving trip i uh, like the two uh silver romeo at three to one yeah with a good break he's going to get a great trip to outside down to inside uh it's up to fear Girl. does he want to go to the front which i think he could could he just rate just off of it it's that last little you saw it on that video he looked like he was going to win it and go free he just kind of flattened late which has been a habit of his over the last couple spots i i, I like the sustainable run uh that the nine under the table showed last time and what i think was a little bit better allowance race stand on November the 11th. Brett Santangelo has gotten this horse to really move up. I mean, it's found a home on the grass. Sure. I think should be able to draft over, get good enough position early. I like the way he kept chugging along to get up to beat Brooke Arita, match his horse that was stepping up off of a maiden special weight win. Uh, let's take a shot with under the table, maybe a little bit better value. I respect that horse. I'll use him second to four. Forever Bernardini from the Mike Chambetta barn. First time gelding here yeah. on this three-year-old son of Bernardini. Forrest Boyce gets aboard. Uh, broke his maiden against uh, uh, maiden special weight on the synthetic at Prescott, mm -hmm. two back, uh, getting back to the turf today. Still a question mark if he even likes the turf. Yeah, he cl they, those, and those three, the, 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 you mentioned the two nine, but they clearly look like the horses to beat in here. If I'm trying to look for any price, maybe some promises. I like his move outside to inside for training D Damon Dilla to Vigo out of that same Daniel Adu race. He had a rougher trip, though, than Silver Romeo that day. Silver Romeo was able to save ground most of the way. He was caught wide. He'll, he'll settle down inside. Once again, though, the distance is a question mark. Right. Maybe a mile would be a little bit better for him. We'll see. All right. So um, that's a nice uh, race mm -hmm. there on the Fort Marcy turf course yeah. going eight with the rail at 87 feet there in race three. Let's get a commercial break. When we come back, today's Rainbow Pick 6 carry over a little over $800. That will start race four today mm -hmm. on our nine race program. Late Pick 5, nice carry over today. A little shy of 3700 That will start in race five. We'll start with those when we come back. The all-new Laurel Park is beyond your expectations. Feel the anticipation. Witness the speed. Experience the thrill.
Welcome back here today at the races at Laurel Park, presented by Fidelity First and uh, Keith Fustel, Stan Salter and I. The sun is out. A beautiful Sunday fun day on tap for you here at Laurel Park. Rainbow Pick 6 starts in race 4 today, carry over $847. And then, uh, there we go, today at the races, presented by Fidelity First, our friend Dan Eubanks. Appreciate him. Always good to see him yes. out here. He's, he's due to come out here uh, on a Sunday fun day, so we hope to see him out here today. Let's take a look here at my rainbow pick six ticket starting in race four. We're on the bowl game turf course here in the fourth with the rail at 17 feet, going five and a half furlongs. Here's my ticket. I'll go five deep here in race four using the one, four, five, eight, ten, going four deep there in race five. And then I'll key on the six in race six, Ginger Beer with the red hot Fergal Lynch, four to one morning line mm -hmm. for trainer Catherine Robinson. And then going four deep there in race seven. In race eight, that's a very nice, tough allowance feature of the day. I love a 10 to one shot in there, Keith. The four, oh, yeah. dare to be on the cut bag for trainer sure. Rodney Jenkins, Victor Corral School Board. Uh, but some tough horses in here. Um, uh, the 15 catching fly fireflies, I'll use that one. Fergal Lynch aboard. Uh, some other ones in there I'm worried about. The 14 Spanish Romance. Uh, Rumble Doll is in there somewhere. That's a tough mm -hmm. race. Yes, good that's race. our allowance Real good race. feature of the day. And mm -hmm. then race nine, I'll use the heavy favorite, the six, Catharos Legend, eight to five. And I like a, a 12 to 1 shot in there from the Tom Iannotti bar in the 9 Blanchfield there in the finale. Let's take a look here, though, at race 4. This okay. is a claiming 10,000, everyone, two lifetime, five and a half on the bowl game turf course. My uh, top pick, the 8 zipping by Forrest Boyce aboard here for Donnie Barr. Uh, last time, a little tougher race. Again, 16, two life, an okay fourth that day. I uh, was coming into that race off about a two month of mm -hmm. freshening. Mm -hmm. So now second race back, this horse trains here at Laurel Park for Donnie Barr, finds easier company today, I think. Yeah, zipping by uh, should get a real good trip. Uh, Forrest Boyce, the right kind of rider for this horse. He's shown a couple races in that 66 two back, definitely gets it done. He's tactical enough, he's gonna have, you know, he's. He's a stalker. He's he doesn't have a huge, huge closing punch, but he might have a quick little move around the turn into the lane to go clear of the closers and try to hold on. There's a ton of speed uh, in, in this race. Fuse line, I think, has got some speed. Zipping by has got speed. Can stalk money market. What's this horse by exchange rate going to do? Right. Transferring to the turf with a lot of speed. You've got a <laughs> Charlestown four and a half kind of specialist out there that shows good speed there. I think they're going to be rocking and rolling up front. Gator Boy with Fiergal Lynch, you know. Damien Ghost gets, you know, gets the hot rider here, Fiergal Lynch. Uh, hasn't been able to, to make up a lot of ground of late, okay. He's going to be well back early. I, he's got to get in position, maybe three or four out of it by the head of the lane. If he does, I think he can go ahead and run down this speed and maybe edge by zipping by. I have the, the five in, in my top five there, in my top four. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the 10 money mark. Yeah, gets on the turf for the first time here for trainer Jonathan Maldonado. First start for the modern Maldonado barn. Mm -hmm. First start on the turf. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, speed on this uh, with this horse on the dirt and the synthetic. Broke his maiden on mm -hmm. the synthetic at Prescott against Maiden Special Weight. He's, uh, he's fit the bit pretty good his most recent starts uh, yep. against tougher company. Uh, 30,000 to life at Keeneland. That's a tough race. And then mm -hmm. uh, PA State Bread Allowance uh, last out. So gets to the turf again today. Javion Toledo takes the call. Mm -hmm. I, I would have to imagine they're going to try to send and see if this horse will mm -hmm. like the turf. I think he will by exchange rate. Mm -hmm. There's uh, who's a Danzig sire. Yeah. So uh, I think enough turf pedigree there, uh, hopefully. Yeah, one of the other speeds, the four. Empty prize. Forgot about him. Uh, this is going to be the first sprint with blinkers on on the turf. Uh, this horse has a lot of gas. Uh, had been running at, at Monmouth, Delaware, Penn National. Will be certainly part of the pace flow with Trevor McCarthy. They the one Saltry encounter is finally going to get the trip that he really likes as well. This horse likes to be covered up. When he kind of gets outside, he just kind of just loses, a t loses focus. He just kind of drifts and just never really kicks it in. He's going to be bottled up inside, and that might be the best thing for him to find a seam the last eighth of a mile. All right, then you also have the uh, the 11 in there, Hunt and Quest, another yeah. first-time turf horse for trainer Ali yeah. Figgins. The barn with a nice win yesterday, and they get a live rider here, Kevin Gomez, in the top five in the uh, standings. You know, you see this trainer here, and, and he's done unbelievable with turf. Not really a huge, huge percentage, but, you know, first turf, he's 12%. Look at that ROI, 527. Turf sprints, wins at 8% of the time, but a positive ROI. Uh, and this horse has been away for a while. We've seen an, I've seen a horse, didn't he have one win the other day by the Stallion Hunt Crossing? I'm really not familiar at all with him. But uh, just figures at a price on the turf 
uh, I'm going to toss into the mix. All right, so a, a wide open race there in race four to kick off the rainbow pick six. Big carryover of the day comes in race five with the late pick five, that industry low 12% takeout, a little over 3,600 in the carryover mm -hmm. here for the pick five. I have a ticket. Let's take a look. It's similar to my rainbow pick six ticket. However, I'm, I'm going to spread out a little bit more in the last leg, which is a wide open uh, maiden 10, uh, sorry, maiden 16 race. Uh, going four deep here in the fifth race, the three, four, five, seven. King again on the six, ginger beer in race six there, four deep in race seven. I uh, like the eighth race a lot, the four dare to be, and then the 15 catching fireflies. And then I'll go four deep there in the finale. That is really a maiden, a wide open <laughs> maiden 16 two year old Phillies. Wouldn't you just like to hit the all button yes. in that race? That race I've gotten written later on the. I've got impossible. That, that's basically it. If you can come up and tell me, you know, who's a stone cold winner in race nine, uh, a, I'll buy you a beer. Be a left lead festival going to the second wire there in the last <laughs> race. All right, let's take a look here. Race five. This is a claiming 5,000 never won two lifetime for Philly Amaris going yeah. seven furlongs on the main track. And uh, my top pick in here is to five, whether or not. Let's take a look here at her last race. This horse is out of a mare by the name of Mary Weather, who's been a solid producer. Mm -hmm. I've liked whether or not since uh, she started running in maiden special weight races. She ran some good races against maiden special weight company. Even back when uh, Gretchen Mo Moberly, who bred this, yeah. uh, who uh, used to train this horse, um, yeah, had the horse. Uh, the horse was running well mm -hmm. and got into trainer John Salzman's barn and uh, finally breaks her maiden in her 14th start uh, last out when dropping down to the maiden 10 uh, going two turns. So I think the confidence is up now. Uh, she's always had some ability. Yeah. She's well spotted here off that maiden win to get the money. She'll be dead fit going seven furlongs with Angel Sir aboard mm -hmm. I like the five whether or not at two to one kind of like an omni fig almost you look at some of most of her dirt races clearly better uh, than the rest of this field took her a long time to get the maiden this is a filly that's seen every part of this racetrack yep. she's been short on the turf long on the turf long on the dirt middle distance on on the dirt does she really know where, where she is but uh, she you know she'll, she'll she's gonna be a major factor I think right to the front I, I originally like ghetto fabulous who was making the transfer from synthetic uh, to the dirt for Wayne Potts uh, has now scratched uh, whether whether you're not, we'll be forward a long, long way in here. And um, you have the four in your exact yeah. and my awesome alley, Jomar Torres, the apprentice aboard here mm -hmm. uh, for trainer uh, Mike Trombetta. This horse also uh, gets a little class relief today. Yeah, my awesome alley, uh, the, the try back at seven furlongs wasn't terrible. And as a race back in the summertime, uh, when it was kind of too far back off the pace, she had a little bit of late life in there. Uh, I'm, I'm, the pace flow is going to, I think, could hamper this horse. I was looking for a little bit more pace in this race. It's going to be tough, but yeah, I'll lie a little bit. Let's take the bug rider, the seven pound bug rider, and throw into the mix. We'll, we'll be a square price. I'll throw the three into my exact, the proud maid, Mary in the barns, doing the right thing here, just dropping this filly mm -hmm. down to the bottom, see if they can get her to wake up. Uh, yeah. They had her way back uh, when she started, then uh, they, they claimed her off her, yeah. then trainer Sonia Alexic went back yeah. and claimed mm -hmm. her back, so they must like something about the filly. Trevor McCarthy gets aboard today. Uh, this horse drop into the bottom switching to the uh, yeah. the dirt going seven furlongs yeah. she's gonna have to run faster on the dirt than she ever has she has kind of always just run those middle 30 uh, buyer figures you see my awesome alley can click a mid 40s obviously whether you're not as run into uh, you know the, the middle 50s I, I don't think she's gonna run that today uh, but certainly McCarthy they like they, you know they went back got this Philly probably a, you know a, a barn favorite Right, right, the runner again. She's going to have to step up a little bit. All right, let's roll on here to the late pick four starts in race six. There's our picks already up there for you. Let's take a look okay. at my top pick, and here's my one of my best bets today. Key horse on the rainbow pick six, the six ginger beer. Here's ginger beer's last race, November 12th, here at Laurel Park yeah. at this level. Open 75, going six furlongs on the grass. She comes, uh, didn't break too well this day. Got a little uh, pinched at the start. Comes six wide with Fergal Lynch aboard. Gets up for a good third. Moral high ground. Uh, wins the race here. Ginger Beer comes late, uh, just gets beat a neck here. Fergal mm -hmm. Lynch stays aboard today for trainer Holly uh, Robinson. Uh, this five-year-old mare ran a, a bang up second yeah. two races back, so she's in top form for the new barn here. Uh, two strong efforts from Holly Robinson. Fergal Lynch stays aboard here for the third time. Hopefully the third time the charm today for the hot jock. Yeah, brutal trip last time when bunched, bumped and pinched at the break. Certainly kind of uh, renewing a rivalry with Sally O'Sally, uh, who I think is a little bit better. Got a slight blemish on her turf record last time, but I think it's a little bit better at five and a half furlongs on the grass. Sweet Sway's a user at a price. I go to the 10 horse, take it inside. May hold the best value, a real versatile type. Picks up Cintron today just in front of Ginger Beer yep. last time. I, I like the, the position where this horse is going to get the break. I think this is going to have, you know, 
get a good stalking spot, gets the lead. Once again, going to have to hold on. Like, this horse is battle-tested pretty well on the turf. I like her today. I think she'll be about that 9-2 to or 5-1 to one price. I respect her. I'll use her there in my top three. The eight Stormy Mistress. We get Javion Toledo aboard. Uh, very good second last out against an open 11 company. That's a tough condition. A little bit of a drop down here mm -hmm. to the open 75. Toledo, who's won on this horse before back in July right here at Laura Park, yeah. gets back aboard today for Bill Comlow. No doubt. We'll probably go ahead and send. We'll maybe try to pin Sally O. Sally in there. I don't think she wants to get caught up in a duel. Uh, she, she hasn't run those races back to back. That's the thing. It was a tough race last time. She's run a couple of tough races in a row. Uh, will she come back? She comes back to that 67. Boy, she's right in the mix, Dan. All right, nice, uh, nice wide open 75 turf scramble there in race six to kick off the late pick four. Mm -hmm. uh, race seven, uh, a nice uh, allowance. Race eight's our allowance feature of the day, but this is a very nice Philly and Mare first level allowance condition going seven furlongs on the main track. Let's take a look here at my top pick, Hold On Mama. This was her debut effort last December uh, as a two-year-old Philly, and this was a very, very impressive performance at 24 four to one. She goes right to the front with Forrest Boyce aboard today and wins by two and a quarter length. You see the horse there in yeah. second, Tack Rees. Well, what did Tack Rees go on to do? Become a stakes horse yep. for trainer Kieran McLaughlin. So this was a strong win. After this, uh, she caught a very, very tough allowance race going a mile mm -hmm. in the second start. And then they took her down to Tampa. Uh, she had to ship all the way down there to Tampa. Tough spot next yeah. in the grade two. And then she had a little break and they brought her back. And she ran decent at, at Delaware last May. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they tried the turf last July. So then they gave her a long break. Um, well, she's had off since July, so mm -hmm. she's been freshened now. She's uh, late in her three-year-old year. Some nice works up there at Fair Hill mm -hmm. for the comeback race today. Fergal Lynch gets aboard. I'll go with the, the one hold on Mama to get back in top form here for trainer Trez Abbott. No doubt. She looked like she was going to be any kind, Stan, sure. with Ooh. that win as a two-year-old. Uh, Good-looking horse. She dict just dictated the pace. Wasn't set down to upper stretch and held off a nice horse. And Tack Reese was really running at the end when you watch that video. Then, it, then right to the mile. You know, right. that knock her out. Some of these moves, uh, you know, like I say, we're not trainers, but when we look at it enough from handy, handicapping, it's tough sometimes for those horses to go from one sprint out to a mile or a mile and a 16th, and then some, some issues along the way. She's well fresh, and she's going to have to probably break clean, go clear, I think she can, of this field, uh, and get off the inside. The inside hasn't been the greatest part. We'll monitor her again today. It will be tough. The, race, the road is probably going to have to go through the one. Hold on, Mama. Super sharp, though. I was going to be my top selection for, for Mary Apple. This horse is showing a rating gear, a good effort. Uh, two back in a mile over the muddy surface against a lesser bunch, no doubt. That wasn't a tough race off the turf. It showed a little, you know, it was a respectable try in New York. Uh, hold on, Mama goes in front. I think I, if I was a boy, we'll be, make a move into her at one point. Super sharp is starting to show a little bit more versatility. And that try back at seven furlongs in January of 2016 wasn't awful an okay field uh, i think she's getting better and, and um the, we both like the two if i was a boy mccarthy gets back aboard uh here today mccarthy uh, broke the maiden on this three-year-old daughter of jumpstart uh last april and uh her most recent race has the beaten favorite at this level really mm -hmm. uh, the, the only b bad race uh, she's running in her career um so hopefully we just give her give her a mulligan for that race and see if she gets back in top form today for bill Comwell. yeah it wouldn't surprise me if she is the main you know t sets gets the target early on hold on mama those two kind of maybe go away from the field i think they're quick enough they're both quick enough looking at their race recent races and tearing apart the internals for if i was a boy uh they're, they're i think they're going to hook up at some point and we'll see if super sharp can wear them down that's going to be my guess in this race well one two and three look like the horses to beat some other interesting horses here the four calling miss brown grand motion mm -hmm. with the winner yesterday with a horse coming up from keeneland uh, and this uh, four-year-old daughter of uh, pulpit runs with bar shoes today uh six to one from a live barn here what do you think here on the four mm. uh Mind for Keeps, you know, see, it ran the final half without stirrups in its debut win, beating Mind for Keeps, who we saw come back to win here. Uh, Lasix went on to Keeneland, a lot to ask, shipping down, probably against an okay field. Whew, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, once again, though, she's going to have to run clearly faster and much, much, much faster than what she's done in her first two starts. I'll throw the six in there, Little Miss Lupe, 9 to 2 for Claudio Gonzalez. Kevin uh, Gomez gets aboard. Little Miss Lupe, mm -hmm. two time winner here at Laurel Park, ex exits a, a very tough, wide open $15,000 mm -hmm. race, a good second that day. And uh, maybe the maybe the speed figure a little low uh, in, in that race against an open, uh, a tough mm -hmm. open 15 company. Yeah, that, that, I, I think that would, chilly start would have fit definitely in this field. Arbling uh, shines, decent, a red hot horse. 
uh, th that horse looked like it was ridden to run kind of second last right. time. Took back off of it and, and slugged up for second. Seven furlongs. I know it's two for three, but against this this group, I'm, I'm not quite sure. All right. Yeah, and we got to say one thing. Uh, Graham, what about the win yesterday? Uh, Bellows. Uh, oh, yep. not Bellows, but the out at uh, Santa Ni uh, Del Mar. I'm sorry, okay, that yep. stake. The horse that broke its maiden here when yep. I was gone during the Breeders' Cup. Actually, and he woke us up at a good price. That was an impressive win. Grand motion yeah. win. Winning races everywhere. Trains right here in Maryland up at Fair Hill. He used to be stabled right here at yeah. Laurel Park. He's always dangerous. Uh, so he wins a, the greatest stake out there at yeah. Del Mar. Wins a, a race here mm -hmm. at his home track. So uh, yeah. the motion barn having a good fall. Let's turn the page here. Race eight. Very, very nice. Tough handicap mm -hmm. and race here. This is our allowance feature of the day. An upper level, two other than allowance race, optional claiming 32,000. We're on the bowl game turf course going five and a half furlongs with the rail at 17 feet. Let's take a look here. You have a video on the yeah. 15 catching fireflies gets a Fergal Lynch aboard today for trainer Arno Delacour. Yeah, what a difference like a month made. Uh, second off the layoff uh, for Arno Delacour, so horse catching fireflies. Five-year-old chestnut mare uh, by value plus. And look at this horse, three wide under a guzzle hold in a good field and just cruising up to the field. And, and, and pretty much, I don't say win for fun, but you know, when a horse was able to do it that easily, coming to the eighth pole, spurts away and holds on late. Uh, we can take it from there. This horse has plenty of back class. Well, he, he, uh, he hit he, the go button right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. See leave, you later. Leave, leaving the eighth pole, and, and it's all over. Uh, a, a good late run. Seeking Paradise was well meant in there, if, sure. I'm, not, if I'm not, you know, forgetting anything. Seeking Paradise, a nice, uh, nice mare in her own right. This horse has back class. Something happened, between, you know, second off the layoff. It really moved up nicely. She might get the jump, I think, on the nine Rumble Doll, who's a really nice turf sprinter in her own right. All right, so I, I have I am only two deep here on my pick yeah. six and late pick five, and the the, the 15 is a horse I'm using protectively. Okay. So you have that horse on top. That makes me feel good mm -hmm. about taking a shot here yeah. on a 10 to one shot here. The four dare to be who had a very nice. Uh, allowance win against first level allowance company two back going five and a half furlongs coming from off the pace had all kinds of trouble that day but got up for trainer Rodney Jenkins and Victor Carrasco that day at four to one uh, the place horse my sister Caro and Mona Vista crossing who was third would both come back to win yeah. uh, they tried a closing sprinter so they say well maybe she'll go long they tried mm -hmm. uh, the two turns uh, at this level last out just didn't work out she got bumped around yes, a little bit did. that day and mm -hmm. uh, now she's cutting back in distance the barns about 18 percent round to sprint they're 21 percent with a positive roi overall right. in turf sprints there's a nice bullet work going a half mile 49 and one on november 22nd carrasco riding jenkins main go-to rider mm -hmm. they're 21 percent overall from a large sampling i think this is a very live 10 to one shot here the four dare to be you're, you're going to get a square price and this is the right move turning back in distance keys up against those key horses my sister carol and mona vista crossing no doubt it's a really really good uh, rumble dials in here this optional. is a rumble yeah. in this race Mm -hmm. I mean, uh -huh. look at Rumble Doll come, come running behind uh, Lady Shipman, only beating a couple lengths in the very one at Pimlico. Uh, this is the right thing, five and a half, a really, really good distance. Called a tough field down at Kentucky Downs over a yielding surface. That's kind of a tough surface for horses to get over there the first time, but uh, back into a really, really good spot for Falcone. And we both like the um, the 14. You have Ready for Romance in there as well for Rudy Rod. We both like the 14, one of two tra horses are no Delacour, yeah. or Delacour with catching fireflies. Don't forget about the 14, Spanish Romance, making her first start here yeah. in the USA, gets Trevor McCarthy first time Lasix. We've seen Del Delacour mm -hmm. uh, win with this move before. Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, broke the maiden right off the bat and wins again. Uh, tried some tough company, some grade three company, group three company. Yeah, a real question mark. Once again, I'll watch the board a little bit this horse. You don't want to get beat by this type of horse, right. um, especially when he's got catching fire eyes back in for the tag again. That, sure. that, 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 that was an intriguing move even off of that win, but has to do it to keep the condition. Ready for romance. Wins his first three races. Has been able to handle a layoff. Has been off for quite a long time. Rudy brings his rider in here. Montana is this horse. Should okay. be ready to go. Rudy Ron, always yeah. dangerous shipping in here. Very nice upper yeah. level allowance feature of the day there in race eight to kick off the late daily double. Here we go, race nine, final race of the day. You'll just in time for the 4 o'clock football games to start up there <laughs> at the second floor. Hopefully uh, you're live in your fantasy football pick seven uh, going into the 4 o'clock games. Uh, race 9, Maiden claiming 16000 for two-year-old Phillies going a flat mile on the main track. Uh, the 6, Cathars Legend, your heavy 8-5 to five favorite here for Mike Trombetta, Javion Toledo aboard. I'll use that runner second, uh, but going to try to uh, try to put a price on top here. You have a nice 15-1 to one shot on top, all this jazz with Malcolm Franklin. Let's start right there. Malcolm Franklin, 
one win away from a big milestone 1,000 oh, cool. uh, career wins, and he's aboard here uh, for uh, on a big price and here for his main man, Hammy Smith. It would be fitting if he does it for Hammy and Lee Christian, uh, the owner, yeah. a guy who uh, I see every year and, and have met a really good guy uh, down at the Ellery Trials. Uh, that would be fitting yeah. if, if, if he gets it done. All this jazz is a horse that ran okay behind, called and sick, who came back to run well, uh, ran a decent number. I don't know what happened last time. Uh, bet down to nine to two, didn't run a step. We've seen this from Hammy before, though. They, they can reverse form a little bit. Let's hope all this jazz at 15-1. In a race, it's virtually impossible. You're just it's guessing on a lot of these horses, Stan. Yeah. Yeah, you're guessing on a lot of these horses. Cantera's legend, I lined it 8-5 to five simply because of the connections. You see the glaring 41. I'll be that was on the turf course, but a drop-in class, Live Oak Plantation. You figure this horse is going to get bet. But in no way, shape, or form is she a cinch. So, so we're both yeah. thinking the same thing. We're just yeah. a minute to go here. I'll go with the 12-1 to one shot on top. Forest Boys for mm -hmm. trainer Tom Iannotti. The barn quietly having a very, very solid year. Iannotti 21% on the year and he's mm -hmm. having a strong meet here as well. Three wins from eight starters. That's 38%. Mm -hmm. uh, he's one for five with a nice positive ROI recently with Maidens making their second start. Nothing went well in the, de in the debut at all but at least right. uh, this two-year-old daughter of Colonel John has a race under her belt going a mile. Uh, Forest Boy stays aboard. Uh, I think uh, a live 12 to one shot here mm -hmm. uh, for connections that are doing well. Yeah and McCarthy stays on my other selection the three Divine Kitten was bet it was the lower price of of the, uh, the Clovis Klein runners in, in that race on November the 11th. The blinkers go back on third time Lasix. Uh, I like the Trevor stays. All right, hopefully you're live and some of your will pays going into the ninth and final race. Sunday, fun day, right around the corner. First race post time, 1230. Nice carryover in that late pick five. Dave Robin coming up next with all of today's scratches and changes. Best of luck. Good luck.